Welcome to an introduction to using adaptive leadership in Project Launch. This short video will introduce some basic concepts from the adaptive leadership framework and will offer Project Launch grantees examples of how these concepts can be applied in their work. Project Launch is a grant-based initiative funded by the United States Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. It exists to support work at both local and state, territory, or tribal levels to build and strengthen early childhood systems. The Project Launch Initiative is awarded to grantees to conduct work within five strategies. Integration of physical care and behavioral health. Enhanced home visiting support. Implementation and or support of early childhood mental health consultation. Increased social emotional screening and assessment in various early childhood settings and family support and strengthening. Identifying ways to initiate and or expand upon the existing early childhood systems work in the five project launch strategies is complex. It requires everyone who is on the project launch team to build and exercise leadership that engages others in a collective commitment to move towards change with shared ideas shared process, shared purpose, and shared outcomes. In addition to the complexity of implementing the five project launch strategies and the relationship building collaboration necessary to create an early childhood system, there is the reality of a constantly changing environment. People, policies, political views, and natural and cultural events all fluctuate and influence elements of our work and the progress that we make. Exploring and reflecting upon our successes and our challenges provides a space for ideas to emerge and adaptation to occur in our work. It is important that we bring in as many voices and viewpoints as possible to ensure the work we do reflects the needs and desires of the communities we serve. Our day-to-day -day operations and human interactions keep us so busy, and we have to remain aware of how external factors impact those operations and interactions. That is key. We cannot plan for project growth and sustainability without accounting for the fact that change is constant. This is where the idea of leading adaptively takes hold. Adaptive leadership is an approach where rather than providing solutions, a leader or leaders asks tough questions, leverages the collective intelligence, challenges norms, and provides for enough energy or sometimes discomfort to motivate a group to action. Adaptive leadership is based upon the premise that many lead for the benefit of many. This shared and adaptive approach to leadership can be traced as far back as the writings of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, where Lao Tzu wrote as the best leader, when the task is done, the people will say, we did it ourselves. For some, the term adaptive leadership may be new. However, the adaptive frame of this approach has roots in biological and evolutionary theory that may be more familiar. Consider for a moment how in nature, theories of adaptation and evolution indicate success through what is commonly known as survival of the fittest. The key components that drive an organism to survive and adapt are competition and survival. Resources, even at the most basic level, such as food and water, are finite. In order for an organism to survive and its species to thrive, adaptation becomes essential. The process of adaptation is cyclical. In 1999, Canadian scientists Don McIver and Elaine Wheaton wrote an article in which they described this cycle and made note of the fact that adaptation can occur in several different circumstances. Who or what adapt? What do they adapt and why? How do they adapt? What impacts the result of this adaptation? And 
How well do they adapt or evolve? Applying the questions from MacGyver and Wheaton's adaptation cycle to project launch, we may ask at different and multiple stages of our work. Who and what adapted to shifts in the early childhood and community environment? What was adapted? Was it roles to support young child well-being, new partners, or engaging parents in new ways? How did the adaptation happen? What changed in the community and the system as a result of that adaptation? And how is the adaptation working? The information offered thus far creates a frame for how the scientific concepts of adaptation and evolution apply to the practice of adaptive leadership. In the case of Project Launch, we draw on our own individual strengths, as well as those of a group, in order to drive our work forward and shape more robust and positive outcomes for the families and communities that we serve. Of course, to move the launch initiative forward, we need to take into account the environment, the elements of work that exist within the environment, and the steps we take to realize this work. Knowing this, Let's now consider three types of work, simple, complicated, and complex. In work that is considered simple, for example, baking a cake, there is a recipe. If you follow the recipe correctly, you will likely achieve the anticipated outcome. You will have a delicious cake. In fact, you can repeat the same recipe over and over and over again and achieve the same outcome. This is the technical work we often gravitate to because there is comfort in predictability. In work that is complicated, you still use a recipe. There are just many more steps and parts. For example, building a car engine is hard, but directions exist, and if you follow them precisely, it is likely that you will have a car engine when you finish. Implementing promising programs with manuals and toolkits may take time, but if followed with fidelity, they often produce the anticipated results. In work that is complex, there is no recipe. There are multiple interrelated parts with no defined relationship between them or process for understanding how it is all gonna work. And those parts are dynamic, they are fluid. They change and they impact each other. The parts can also shift and change based on the environment. People, policies, events, along with things we cannot see, all influence the way in which the parts work and how they fit together. The outcome is totally unpredictable and that feels risky. It's sort of like raising children. You can have three children and follow the same recipe for parenting with each one, but it is unlikely that you will have three identical children who look and act the same. Each of the five strategies that make up Project Launch are complex. For example, integrating behavioral health and pediatric care depends on the individual providers, the population, and the health and mental health systems in the community. In deepening our knowledge and commitment to the role of leadership in adaptive, complex system change, we recognize that there are concrete things a leader must be aware of and choose to take on as part of their leadership. The first step is to define their personal vision for the community and population they are serving. With a personal vision, leaders often engage in complex change by getting right to the task that they have identified or others have identified for them. While it is important to start on the task as soon as possible, it is critical that leaders reflect and think through what they hope will happen for children and families as a result of their work. In other words, leaders involved in complex system change need to have personal vision as they begin the work. A project launch leader, for example, might have a vision that a variety of providers who support young children and their families will, together, provide a competent, coordinated, and comprehensive system leading to social and emotional well-being.
To engage others in the work, adaptive leaders must offer their personal vision as an invitation to work together, to create a shared vision in a group where people have a variety of ideas, perspectives, and priorities. That may sound obvious and easy, but it requires a level of courage and humility to offer a personal vision for the changes necessary so that it can become truly shared. In the case of Project Launch, a project director must engage their young child wellness councils in a vision they are all working on in their individual organizations and systems collectively. Besides having a personal vision, another important step in adaptive leadership is to get on the balcony. Getting on the balcony is an analogy for stepping away from our day-to-day -day work and relationships and taking a bird's eye view of our surroundings. We observe not only the people and work that exist within our own organizations, but also the larger political, social, and research-based environments that surround us. All of these pieces coexist and are subject to regular change. Having a clear view of these various factors may then lead us to identify adaptations that can improve or enhance the work that we do. For example, current research provides evidence that early child mental health consultation increases the quality of childcare for all children. From this research, Project Launch leaders have gained insight and tools to engage childcare providers and administrators as partners in the practice of creating environments where healthy social and emotional development for children can occur, along with processes for identifying any potential need for screening, behavioral intervention, and care to take place. This approach represents a change from where, in the past, an intervention may have occurred on an individual level without taking into full account environmental or systems level approaches that may have a greater impact on the well-being of young children and families. Having official authority to lead is not required to get on the balcony to distinguish between technical and adaptive challenges. What is required is that the leader intentionally climb up to the balcony and then return to the dance floor where the actual work is occurring. When you're on the dance floor, you are very focused on what you're doing. You can see your partner or group that is dancing with you as you're dancing along with them. Your view is limited to you and your partner or small group, and your task is to dance. While you may feel the music, it is very hard to get a sense of other contextual factors while you're in the process of dancing. It is when you choose to go up to the balcony that you take in a broader view of the dance hall. Not only can you see the group you were dancing with, but you can see them in the context of others. In fact, you can see everyone who is dancing. From the balcony, you can see who is not dancing and potentially how they feel about that. Some on the sidelines may appear sad and alone, while others are in conversation and happy to be there. Also, from the balcony, you can see the clock, so you know how much time is left. You may start to make predictions about the behavior of some of the attendees based on the coming end of the evening. Finally, you may notice trends in the music. Is it getting faster? Is it getting slower? Is the crowd who is dancing thinning out, or are they getting more boisterous? Noticing these patterns and trends gives you data to take with you back down to the dance floor. As an adaptive leader, there are times when it is important to invite other people to the balcony with you so that different views can inform the work. Inviting people who are directly involved in or impacted by the work will make it all the more meaningful and applicable to the need aiming to be addressed. There are several types of people that must be engaged in complex system change as project partners, leaders, or both. First, and most obvious, the champions. They are the people that know and believe in what you're doing. Champions often have influence, resources, and ideas, and their involvement expands the scope and reach of your work. In Project Launch, they are those that share and promote a vision of an early childhood system that promotes social and emotional wellness. 
Then there are those out there who may not know about or be currently engaged in your change effort. However, from the balcony, you might predict that they could be strong partners if invited. This is where the leader is called upon to have a message reflective of the purpose of this effort that they can use to inform, enroll, and keep in the movement. Increasing support to child care providers to screen for concerns and work with parents can be an engaging message to partners in the child care community who often work apart from other early childhood experts. Then there is the indispensable opposition. If everybody agreed on where you were going and how you were going to get there, you might already be there. With every complex change, it is almost certain there'll be people who disagree and perhaps even stand in the way of the progress you're hoping to make. The first challenge for a leader with the indispensable opposition is to stop, avoid negative assumptions, and listen to what they have to say. The second challenge is to invite them into your effort and work to keep them there. When extending invitations to project partners and leaders, give consideration to inviting those from a variety of community groups to make sure the various perspectives offered are not only from different professions, but also different cultures. Now that we have discussed some of the main principles of adaptive leadership, let's further explore how these concepts can be applied to project launch work. Leaders in grant initiatives like Project Launch rarely have the authority to change systems. They may not employ grant team members, control the initiative's budget, or have the authority to change policy. For these reasons, some leaders in complex systems initiatives do not see themselves as leaders who can influence that level of desired change. One of the key characteristics of adaptive leadership is that anyone can lead and their leadership is not dependent on authority. Anyone leading without authority must believe they can do it. Be willing to take risks, be patient, and stay in the work. The work of implementing an initiative with five launch strategies requires thinking on two levels, technical and adaptive. It is clear that leaders in Project Launch manage and guide the technical aspects of the work. Just like simple and complicated efforts, in technical work, everyone can see the challenge or problem in the same way, and they know what the solution is. Training is often a technical response that leaders can easily put in place. Leaders also have to be mindful of complex adaptive work. This is the part of the effort that requires us to observe our values, attitudes, and beliefs. As the environment evolves and values, beliefs, and attitudes may require shifts and changes in order to be responsive, we might see that a new direction is needed, but it may not be clear as to what the new direction is. When values do not align with the environment, clues emerge as to what adaptation might be necessary. Identifying the environmental changes, value misalignment, and needed adaptation cannot be defined by just one person, and they cannot be resolved by just one person. This is where one might need to create a holding environment for a group to identify the adaptive challenges and potential solutions. The collaborative collective effort to change a system takes time, patience, and a willingness to be vulnerable and take risk. It also requires the capacity to hold a space and manage the pace of change so that the movement remains inclusive, participatory, and authentic. An adaptive leader can hold that space and knows when to increase or provoke distress because that conflict is important to a change process. They also know how and when to decrease stress because it is becoming destructive to the collaborative effort. For example, there may be different perspectives on how to implement an integrated health and mental health system. The differences may be about pace 
or order of implementation. Holding a space to share varying perspectives and work to a collective approach is the hard work of a leader. In Project Launch, you started your grant by doing an environmental scan that was developed collectively with others doing early childhood work. Presumably, the environmental scan was done from a Bethany view. After the environmental scan, you most likely went down to the dance floor and started to get to work on one, multiple, or all of the five strategies. Did you, at some point, go back up to the balcony to see how the environment had changed since your scan was initially completed? Was it an opportunity to reflect on the impact of the work that you were doing and observe how people were responding to it? In thinking about how to sustain all that you have achieved in Project Launch, it is another good time to go up to the balcony and consider the environment as it continues to shift. And you must prioritize the elements of your initiative to sustain and identify the best path to do so. To achieve sustainability, adaptive leaders take note of environmental changes and identify areas for adaptation to take place. Asking how attitudes, behaviors, and values have shifted are adaptive questions. For example, in a changing environment that asks pediatricians to do screening, have they shifted their attitude or belief about their role in social and emotional development? As adaptive leaders work towards sustainability in a complex and time-limited initiative, sharing and communicating the vision and collectively identifying the changing environment and adaptive challenges is critical to the continuing grant effort and sustaining the lessons and achievements of Project Launch. Young Child Wellness Councils are focused on Project Launch strategies and system building, and as they transition to more general early childhood statewide councils, the vision, environment, and adaptation should continue to be a part of the conversation. Adaptive work can be hard. It requires complex thinking, engaging diverse people, humbly inviting others to collaborate and co-create on both technical and adaptive levels. This can feel risky. Having confidants is important to leading for the long haul. These are people you can trust to share accomplishments, frustrations, fatigue, and ideas. Confidants can also share their perspectives. So here is where we have been. Environmental change that requires adaptation constantly surrounds our work in system building. Project Launch, an initiative to build an early childhood system in communities, states, tribes, and territories, using specific strategies, almost always includes shifts in attitudes, beliefs, and values to engage stakeholders in assuming collective responsibility for the well-being of young children and their families. To lead adaptively, leaders get on the balcony, engage others in a holding environment to identify adaptive challenges that they will collectively address. Everyone can be a leader. Adaptive leadership invites everyone into the change process and leads to outcomes that are co-owned and celebrated.